Trapezoidal sums, we have dealt with left hand sums, right hand sums, midpoint sums. So let me tell you a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? A trapezoidal sum. Trapezoidal sum who? A trapezoidal sum who is always a better approximation of the area than the left or right Riemann sum because it is the average of the two. Oh, okay. So you could average your left and right hand sum and get the trapezoidal sum, or you could just find a trapezoidal sum, but it is a better approximation. So why don't we always use it? I don't know. Good question. So formula for the area of a trapezoid, you have seen this in a previous lesson, but I'm going to write it anyway. There we go. And let's move to the next problem. Approximate the area bound between this graph and the graph of that on the interval. Oh, between that and the x-axis, I should say. I'm just reading it like, where's the rest of the words? Find the, approximate the area bound between that graph and what? The x-axis. It's implied. I'll put it in future in this problem. On the interval from 0 to 6 using three trapezoids of equal height. Three trapezoids of equal height. Height? No. Height. Okay? So we're going to do the same situation we did when we found the width of an interval. And that's this. The width of the interval was 6 because 6 minus 0. But we have three trapezoids of equal height. We call them width if you want to. And so when we do that, we're going to have two. So what we're really going to do is have a trapezoid that goes from, let's switch colors, zero to two, doo -doo -doo -doo, and a trapezoid that goes from two to four, and a trapezoid that goes from four to six, which is really going to just be a triangle, but we'll get over it. All right, here we go. Let's start drawing trapezoids. Where's that ink pen? I <laughs> like all these ink pens. You can't see the desk, but it's, it's here. Look, uh, ink pen, it's like... Staples exploded. All right, here we go. First trapezoid is this. It is this high. And when I say high, I mean the height of a trapezoid is the distance between its two parallel sides. This is one parallel side, known as a base. This is its other parallel side, also known as a base. And where's that ruler? There you are, ruler. Do 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 do. Boink. All right, let's color. There we go. There's our first one. Let's write a formula for that. The formula for this is going to be that. One half. Height. The height of this trapezoid is two. And base one is six. Base two is eight. Let's not play that game, actually. Let's play this game instead. The height of the trapezoid is two. The first base is at g of zero. The, the length of the base is g of zero. It is the value of the g function with a x value of zero. So it's g of zero, then plus g of two. There's the first one. Okay, second one. I'm gonna make it red, keeping with my coloring conventions. One half, two, because, you know, two. But there's one side of it. Da, 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 da. There's the other side of it. Do, 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 do. And we're going to color it orange. There we go. And this base length is based on the function value at two, and this length is based on the function value at four. All this is one line, I just didn't do it that way, which means I should probably close these parentheses. Closed, consider yourself closed. All right, next one is also a trapezoid of awkward proportion, uh, one half, two, there's your two, and then this is one of the bases, and the other base is zero, which really just makes this a triangle, but for the sake of the lesson and the fact that we're dealing with trapezoidal sums, I'm going to treat it like the trapezoid that I want it to be. G of four plus g of six, which is zero. And there we go. And we're gonna figure this out. Now, there is somewhat of a shortcut for this, and I'd love to skip some steps, 
but I don't want to confuse anyone. So here's what's really happening. Um, and, and if you don't want to write all this, that's fine. If you want to just kind of wait till the last of it, you may. But, but watch what's happening here. I can factor a one half times two out of all of this. Now I know one half times two is one, but if it wasn't one, I could still do it. So I'm gonna say one half times two, and that would give me g of zero plus g of two plus g of two plus g of four plus g of four plus g of six. Now, if you're not wanting to write all that, I'm with you, I hear you, that's fine. Here's, here's what's really happening. One half times two, again, it's one. If it wasn't one, I would need to put it. I'm gonna put a one because that is one half times the height. But in this case, what I'm really wanting you to notice is that I have one at zero, I have one of them at six, and then I have two of everything in the middle. I have two G of twos, I have two G of fours, and I have a G of six dangling around at the end. And I'm gonna figure all that out on my calculator. Here goes. Is there a shortcut for this on the calculator? Not that I know of. Now, I've never discovered a, a very effective way of doing it. I'm sure there are things we could do, but they're not very effective. Negative one half x squared plus two x plus six. There we go. And we'll type that in. I am gonna leave the one off now. I need g of zero, alpha trace, zero. Um, two, alpha trace, two. And two, four, and that one. Okay, so all that times one, which is just 34. If I did a left-hand sum and a right-hand sum, I would have gotten the average. If I averaged them, I'd get 34. Okay, fill in each blank, either with increasing, decreasing, concave up or concave down. Look at this function. Okay, was this an over or an underestimate? Is there something we didn't color or did we color too much? We did not color that gap, that gap, and hard to see, but this skinny little sliver right here. We didn't color that, so this is an underestimate, okay? So based on that, let's just kind of look at the picture and see how we can fill in this blank. Is this function increasing or decreasing? Uh, both, so let's rule those out. Is it concave up or concave down? It is concave down. So concave down functions consistently have, uh, let's zoom this out. Okay. Second. There we go. You can see more of it. Um, concave down functions consistently have an underestimate if you're dealing with a trapezoidal sum. And if you have a concave up function, check this out. This is from a previous lesson. And I want to do a concave up. Let's do two trapezoids on this one right here. And one of the trapezoids will go from here to here, looks kind of rectangly, and this one is the other one. And we have colored too much, it was concave up. Sometimes if you forget these things that go in these blanks, this one and the previous lesson, you can kind of draw it and get a visual for it. The midpoint ones are a little trickier. Concave up, there you go.